Good afternoon and welcome to 365 Days of Amazing Stories with Theo Mayer. I'm continuing the story of the young man with a severed hand and from a thousand and one Arabian Nights. Here we are on day, I believe it is, 222. Now, you might remember that our young man and this beautiful woman had created quite a love for each other. And he ended up spending all of his money bringing dinners, bringing beautiful things, and then always leaving money behind with her. And in the afternoon, he was you know, about to make his way to her place when he found out that he didn't have any more money. And he got to the main gate of the city and there, there was a huge crowd and people were just pressed against each other. And he ended up pressed against this soldier who he noticed as he was getting pushed and jostled about just as fate would have it. I must tell you that. When he realized he had no money, he said what anybody would say, that there's no strength, no power, except in God, the Almighty, the Magnificent. And here he is thinking, okay, something's going to happen for me. And it seems as it had been preordained. He found himself pushed up against a soldier, and he noticed in the soldier's breast pocket a green tassel hanging out. And he could see into the pocket. He was that close to the soldier and saw that there was a purse attached that was of blue silk. And at that moment, a camel driver came by with a load of wood. And the soldier, in order to avoid the camel driver, turned his attention there. Some evil scheme crossed the mind of that young man, and he reached out for that tasseled purse and pulled the purse from the soldier's pocket. No sooner had he pulled it, than the soldier, feeling some sensation, reached to his pocket and realized his purse was gone. And as he realized this, he turned. And he turned toward our young man. And the look in the young man's face gave away that he had just done something that he shouldn't have done. And the soldier, he just lifted up this mace that he had with him and smashed the young man on the head who fell to the ground. And now suddenly there's a crowd of people that have gathered around what has just unfolded. The soldier's about to beat this young man some more, even though he's knocked out and the crowd says, no, no, stop. What has he done? Caesar said he's a thief. He's stolen my purse. Oh no, there's no way this young man would have done such a thing. As many people have gotten to know this young man by this point and found him to be a very well-dressed, well-mannered and generous young man. The soldier would not be dissuaded and as all this commotion is going on, the chief of police comes up and sees what's happening. And he comes up with the men and goes, okay, tell me, what is going on here? And the soldier said, this, this young man stole my purse. It had 20 gold coins in it. The chief of police said, is this true? And about this time, the young man is coming to his senses and stands himself up. The chief of police says, did you steal from from this soldier, a purse? And the young man stands there, a little disoriented, but he thinks to himself, I cannot confess that I did this, for if I do, I will be punished. But if they search me, they will find it. And without a hesitation, he says, yes, I did, I did take the purse. 
Chief of Police gathered witnesses around. Did you all hear that? He said, yes, we did. And so he had the young man stripped and there they found the purse with the 20 gold pieces in it. The chief of police called the executioner and he immediately had the young man's right hand cut off. He was going to cut off the young man's right foot, but the young man implored the soldier to have mercy on him, which the soldier did. The chief of police he turned and took the executioner with him. The crowd dispersed, and now here's the young man with but a bloody stump. He gathers up his severed hand. He tucks it in his clothing, and off he goes to his beloved's house. And when he gets there, he knocks upon the door and she comes out to greet him. She can see immediately there's something terribly wrong with him. She brings him in, she lays him on a couch, asks him, what is the matter? What has happened to you? I have a headache, he says. She says, no, you must tell me what's happened. Nothing, nothing, I just need to rest. We must eat something. We look horrible. No, I can't eat. Well, I will bring you something to drink. I don't know. I, I don't feel like drinking. But she convinces him to have some wine. And still he won't tell her exactly what's gone on. He, he drinks with his left hand. And she says, why are you drinking with your left hand? He says, I have a boil on my right. She says, well, let me lance it. He says, no, it's not ready. Well, he drinks and drinks until he's somewhat drunk and he falls asleep. And she undoes his robes and finds the stump of his wrist, finds the hand and she binds it up. And, and then when he wakens, he has readied, she's readied for him. It's incredible broth that's made of five chickens worth of bones. And she gives it to him and she turns to him and said, what have you done? Have you spent all of your wealth, all of your riches on me and now even spent your hand on me? I will not have this. You did not need to spend a cent upon me. What has brought you to this? Do you not know if I gave my life to you, it would be less than you deserve. You have brought life to me. How could you have done this? What did you do? Well, of course, he relates to her this story. And she basically says, I would give my life for you. Our young man, he's, he's just a wreck. He's a complete wreck. She pulls out a chest some days into this. Now he's been healing there for some time. And she says, here's all the gold that you brought me and all of the handkerchiefs here in this chest. This is yours. Take it. Keep it. Do what you want with it. I am yours. I would die for you. Well, in the days that follow, he recovers. He's happy to have his wealth back. It brings him some happiness. But within a month, his love, his love of his life grew ill. And she did not recover. And we, she had passed on and she had left everything to him, which was so much. Land, house, crops in the field. Now this, <coughs> the young man told the Christian merchant 
was her generosity that allowed me to have you sell the sesame seed. For this was the crop that I was bringing in since her death. Keep the money that you made off of selling it. I, I do not need it for I have so much at this point. When I was away, I was taking care of other affairs that I needed to. And with this, the merchant and the young man became good friends. They actually went on a sailing trip together to sell goods. They both gathered and bought goods, loaded it on a ship and took it to another place. That other place happened to be where the Christian merchant had gotten in trouble for killing the hunchback. The young man, having weeks before gone on his way, and so you see, said the Christian merchant, isn't this a spectacular tale? More spectacular even than that of the hunchback? The king said, no, I don't think so. I shall hang all of you. But then the steward stepped forth. He said, king, let me tell you a story. And I will guarantee that it is better in either of the stories you have heard, the hunchback or the story of the young man with the severed hand. The king said, fine, let it be so. And so we'll stop the story there and see what's next. Thanks for joining.